my don't play this week is Marvin Harrison. I don't know if it's because Kyler is a midget or if the Cardinals offensive coordinator sucks, but right now I can't play Marvin Harrison. It's the start of the week. I got Javante Williams going against Carolina. He's playing against the worst run defense in the league. The Panthers are 32nd against running backs. How can you not love that? So I think he is the flex play of the week. My favorite. I'm going with a guy you probably picked up off your waiver, Bo Nix. I'd rather start Bo Nix over Patrick Mahomes. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Catching a Vibe. I'm your host, Drew, joined by my co-host, Mike. Uh, today is the Week 8 Starts and Sits videos. How are we feeling about Week 8? I'm ready for, for Week 8 to get started. It's kind of hard trying to figure out who you want to start and sit with the injuries out there. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what you have out there. Hopefully, we can give you some good recommendations on who to start and who to sit. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're going to start off with quarterbacks. And my QB start this week is Jordan Love versus the Jags. Jordan Love has the best matchup this week, 32nd ranked defense against quarterbacks. And I'm going to just be honest, every time I look, look and see who the Jags defense is playing, and if that quarterback's elite, I'm going to pick them most of the time. Uh, I think Jordan Love's elite. He's had some pretty good games since he's been back from injury. He had 28 points versus the Vikings and then 25 versus the, versus the Cardinals. And the Jacks haven't stopped nobody. I mean, Caleb Williams had his best game versus them too. So I like Jordan Love versus the Jags. That's a very good play. That's right. Uh, Jordan Love is a great quarterback, and it is a great matchup. The Jags are. They're towards the bottom of uh, the list on defense, so I like that. I'm excited about this play. I'm going with a guy you probably picked up off your waiver, Bo Nix. He's going against the Carolina Panthers. He's going to have a big week this week. They're 30th in total defense uh, that they're going against Carolina. They're 25th against the pass. They've given up 14 touchdowns. So I, I really love this matchup. This is going to be, I think, a smash play for him. I'd rather start Bo Nix over Patrick Mahomes. So I'm definitely going to put Bo Nix in my lineup because mm -hmm. Carolina's last in scoring defense. They're giving up 34 points a game. They've given up 28 touchdowns already this year. So I think he's going to have a very big game. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. All right, so now we're going to do our quarterback sits, and my quarterback sit this week is Kyler Murray. Kyler's been very hit or miss this year. He has scores of 14, 28, 14, 9, 24, 11, 20. And now he's going up against the Vikings, who are number one against quarterbacks in fantasy defense and numbers. They're fourth in yards per game and first in passing yards per game. Uh, hit or miss kind of quarterback. He has big weeks or he has bad weeks. So he's a good sit. My sit is going to be Baker Mayfield. I mean, this guy has just lost his top two targets on his team. I mean, I feel bad for Baker. He's going against the Falcons. Falcons are the middle of pack defense. They're not that bad. I think they're going to slow down, and I think Baker's going to scale back a little bit and not produce so much this week just because of what they lost. They lost too much, two incredible yeah. receivers. So I'm going to sit Baker Mayfield this week. Very bad break for the Buccaneers. I mean, uh, they were looking like one of the top offenses in the league mm -hmm. with uh, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. That's a shame that he, both those guys are out for some yeah. time. Yeah. All right, so now to the running back position. And my running back start is Kareem Hunt versus the Raiders. Kareem has been pretty good for the Chiefs so far with 10 points in his first game. You know, he was just coming off his couch. Then he had 18, then 22 against the 49ers. Now he plays the Raiders. And if we're being honest, they're not good. Uh, Minshew has been playing really bad this year, and 
he's been putting the Raiders defense in bad positions by terrible interceptions and fumbling the ball. I think the Chiefs are going to win pretty easily, and they're going to run the ball a bunch with Kareem Hunt this week. I agree with you. My start was one of my starts was Kareem Hunt. I mean, he's looking like he's taking the role of Isaiah Pacheco as a three down back. Uh, last week, he had 22 rushes for 78 yards, two touchdowns, two receptions. So I love that, right? He's getting, for the last two weeks, he's had 30 or 63% and 64% of the snaps. And the closest guy to him was 21%. So he's out. That's 45 snaps to 15. It's a running back takeover for him. I think he's their starting running back. Like he said, they're playing against the Raiders. The Raiders are in tank tank mode for a QB next season. I, I just think that it's a great matchup with Kareem Hunt. He's one of my starts. So my other start, I think, is the start of the week. I got Javante Williams going against Carolina. He's playing against the worst run defense in the league. They're 32nd. They're giving up 162 yards, 13 rushing touchdowns. This is a great matchup. Plus, he's starting to get more bump, and he's out on the field more. He played 41 of 63 snaps. That's 63%. The next closest guy, Jaleel McLaughlin, that everybody thought was great, he was only out there 22%. He had 14 carries, 88 yards, two touchdowns last week, and he averages about four receptions a game. I want to get Javante starting, and I want to start him this week. He's the start of the week for me. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. All right, now my running back sit is Tony Pollard versus the Lions. The Titans stink, and I see the Lions will be leading the whole game, and I think that's going to make the Titans have to throw the ball more and less opportunities for Pollard. Losing Hopkins causes more attention to Pollard for defenses, and the Lions defense is second against running backs. So I I can't play him this week against the Lions. Yeah, he was my sit. He's one of my sit also. You're right. The Lions, they're fifth against the run. Like you said, they're second best on uh, not giving up points to the running back position. Uh, I just think that they're going to struggle. He's really the only spotlight on his Tennessee team. You know, now they got to change at the QB position. They got Mason Rudolph. Detroit Lions are going to dictate this game they're going to slow him down and and stop him so one thing i wrote down was people i would rather start over him and i looked at their you know their rankings and people around the rankings i'd rather start Najee harris over him joe mixon of course and josh jacobs these are all guys that are in that same tier right around that same area those are guys i want to start over uh tony pollard yeah I agree with those three players. All right, now we're going to go to receivers. My start of the week is Romeo Dobbs versus the Jags, a guy you probably just picked up. The Jags are terrible. I was talking about how Jordan Love is a good play. I think his number one receiver, mm -hmm. Romeo Dobbs, is a great play. The Jags are 31st against the pass. I think Dobbs is going to have a good day against the Jaguars. I agree. Like you said, they were 31st against the pass. They're giving up 273 yards a game. They've given up 16 touchdowns already this year. So he is a good start. I agree. So I looked around up and down the, the waivers or trying to find out a good receiver to start. This guy's been under overlooked. George Pickens. He's going against the Giants. I think uh, he's been flying under the radar. He's Actually put up good stats when you look at it. He's averaging about eight targets a game. Last week he had 22 fantasy points. And with Russell Wilson behind there being a the quarterback, I think they're going to – he likes throwing the ball a lot more. I think Pickens is going to have a big game. And I think it's really going to make him for the rest of the year projections is going to have a good season yeah. with Russ being the uh, quarterback. The Giants' defense is not very good. I mean, they're decent against the pass, but I just think Pittsburgh is going to throw the ball and have a good day. Mm -hmm. Russ is starting to cook for the Steelers. All right, now my receiver sit is Terry McLaurin versus the Bears. I don't like Terry 
this week because Mariota is starting, and the Bears' defense is really good. They're second against quarterbacks and seventh against receivers. They have Jalen Johnson. He was a pro bowler last year, or all pro. He's going to be following Terry the whole game. I don't like it one bit. And the Bears' defense is only allowing 16 points per game. Now they're going up against a backup quarterback. So I I don't like Terry this week because of that. He was one of my guys that I wanted to sit also. Like you said, the Bears' defense is pretty good. The Bears' defense is seventh against the pass. They're not giving up much production there. Uh, Like, guys, I would rather start over Terry McLaurin since I looked at their rankings. Brian Thomas Jr., T. Higgins, and D.J. Moore, three guys that I'd rather start over Terry McLaurin. And he was sandwiched in between these guys. So there are guys that I definitely want to start over Terry McLaurin. Mm -hmm. So the guy I want to sit, another guy I want to sit is Deontay Johnson. He's going against Denver. I think the uh, clock has struck 12, and Andy Dalton and the Carolina Panthers have turned into a pumpkin, right? Bryce Bryce Young's starting this week. Oh, that's right. They're going with Bryce Young. So – Whoever the quarterback is, Denver's <laughs> defense is uh, fifth against the pass, second second, and giving up points to the receivers. Uh, so it's just a smash sit for me. Guys, I'd rather start over Deontay Johnson, Amari Cooper, JSN, and Darnell Mooney are guys that I would start over top of uh, Deontay Johnson. Okay. So now we have our tight ends, and my tight end start is Dalton Kincaid versus the Seahawks. I like Kincaid a lot more now that Cooper is a Buffalo Bill. I think he frees up a lot of the defense attention and less doubling for Kincaid. He's getting a good amount of targets. I mean, six, seven, six. I think the Seahawks DBs are going to take away the receivers this week, and I think that gives Kincaid to have a opportunity to have – his big week this week. So I like Kincaid. Yeah, he's a good good play. He's actually, the production is starting to ramp up. He's getting more snaps, more targets, more looks. He's definitely a good play. So my start is David Njoku. I think even with Watson being hurt and done, Jameis Winston's going to come in and he's going to have to throw the ball. They're playing Baltimore's defense. The only way to attack Baltimore's defense is through the tight ends. That's their weakness. They're 27th against the tight ends. So that's their only weakness. They're going to have to throw the ball to stay remotely in this game. Uh, Last weekend, Najoku had 14 targets. Yeah. 10 receptions, 76 yards, and a touchdown. I think this is the only way the Browns move the ball is thrown in Najoku. So he's my start. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, my tight end sit is Jake Ferguson versus the 49ers. What a disappointment this Cowboys offense has been this year. I think the 49ers are going to be pissed off that they lost to the Chiefs again. I think they're going to take it out on the Cowboys. They own the Cowboys the last couple of times they beat the Cowboys. Uh, I think Fred Warner's going to be guarding Ferguson most of the game. And I just think the Niners are going to cruise past the Cowboys this week. I agree with you. I was at the beginning of this year, I was high on the Dallas Cowboys offense. You were. Uh, Jake Ferguson was one of those tight ends that in the top 10, I thought was capable of finishing in the top five as a tight end. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you're right. A disappointment. I would definitely sit him until they start proving otherwise. So my sit is going to be Pat Fryermuth. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, they don't even look his way. He's a non-factor. Everybody likes to think he's going to be good, but they just they keep looking the other way. He's only averaging about three targets a game, non-production. I just don't want anything to do with uh, Pat Fryermuth. He's a sit for me. Yeah. All right, so my flex play of the week, you – Talked about this guy already. I'm going Javante Williams versus the Panthers. He had a great week against the Saints. 14 carries for 88 yards and two touchdowns. He talked about he 
got what 60 percent 70 percent of the snaps mm-hmm. um now he's playing the panthers and the panthers are a dumpster fire right now they're starting bryce young again so i like this broncos offense getting a lot of opportunities to be in the red zone and javante to get goal line carries and the panthers are 32nd against running backs how can you not love that so i think he is the flex play of the week my favorite that's very good. He's my start of the week, so yeah. we agree there. Yeah. So uh, my don't play flex this week is Marvin Harrison. Kyler, I'm not a fan of. Marvin Harrison's been disappointing so far. Um, it's not all of his fault, but there's concern because he's getting lack of targets. Uh, the last three games, he had... Two catches, zero, and three catches. I don't know if it's because Kyler is a midget or if the Cardinals offensive coordinator sucks, but right now I can't play Marvin Harrison. Yeah, he's way too inconsistent. What a what a bust. I almost want to tag him as that. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody drafted him in the first round, and he's only putting up three points a game. You just really can't afford to play him. He's definitely a sit yeah. until he starts – and if he's on your bench and he puts 20 points up, oh, well, more times than not, it's going to be a low number. So I definitely sit him. Mm-hmm. And uh, lastly, I have a waiver wire play I like. I like Jalen McMillan or Sterling Shepard versus the Falcons. Godwin is out for the year. Mike Evans won't be back till week 12. Those guys have to step up since Godwin mm-hmm. Evans are out, and they have a good path to get a lot of targets this week. So. I would look for any Buccaneers receivers on the waivers. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I think Baker is still going to go out there and try to throw the ball all, all around best he can. But, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. So that's going to wrap up the Week 8 starts and sits. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Please give it a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you're new here, please subscribe. Getting closer and closer to 1,000 subscribers. I would really appreciate and oh check this guy's new channel out i'll link that down below talking about the college football season mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun yeah right uh, me and my brother started it's called the real selection committee appreciate you to check it out we talk about all the college football games we review the last week and then we have predictions plus we also talk about this 12 team playoff for college football, which is going to be, I think, the best college football season ever just because they actually have a playoff. Mm -hmm. So check us out. Yeah, go do that. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.